Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hello and welcome to a new video. So lately on Pinterest, I've been seeing a lot of wrap tops from like the 1930s, 1940s and 1950s. And I've decided that I would like to try and make one for myself. Actually make that I'm going to try and make three for myself. And I'm going to take you along for the process. The first shirt that I saw pop up was this 1950s blouse, which I believe is from Life magazine. Now, I looked at the pattern and it looks fairly simple. I think it's definitely something that someone with very little sewing experience would be able to make because it is something that's just essentially straight lines. So I am going to give that a try today and see how well it actually fits. The second shirt or blouse is this 1930s Jiffy blouse. The pattern itself looks fairly similar to the first one, except for it has the addition of the long sleeves or butterfly sleeves. So I think it'll be a lot of fun and very cute. And the third top I'm going to be making is inspired by this 1945 Hollywood pattern. Again, it is fairly similar to the last two patterns, but it has a major difference. This pattern has darts and shaping. So the shaping should theoretically create a nicer fit or a tighter fit, but I am creating a pattern just based off the little diagram in the corner, so we'll see how that goes. Now apparently these blouses can be made with one yard of fabric, and truthfully that claim makes me kind of skeptical because I don't think I would be able to make one out of one yard of fabric, but I'm going to be measuring my materials and I will let you know at the end of the video how much I actually used for each blouse. So while I gather my materials, I'm going to pass you over to sponsor Marika. So before we get started today, I want to take a moment to talk to you about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. If you haven't heard of Skillshare before, they are an online creative community with thousands of classes to help you explore and expand your creativity. Now, if you're new to sewing and you haven't even touched a machine before, don't worry. Skillshare has classes that can teach you how to thread a machine, how to read a pattern, and all the basic stitches. And if you're more comfortable with the basics or want to expand on your current knowledge, they also have classes on draping and drafting patterns, as well as starting your own sewing business. Sewing isn't the only topic they cover. They also have a multitude of classes ranging from business to lifestyle to fine arts and many, many more. I'm currently taking a class by Thomas Frank called Productivity for Creatives. Thomas's class covers how to help build a system to encourage your productivity, which I'm not going to lie is something that I desperately need. Now, if you're interested in this class or any of the classes that I mentioned earlier, you are in luck. Because Skillshare is sponsoring today's video, they are offering a free premium membership trial to the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description. And after that, it is just $10 a month for the annual membership. Thank you so much, Skillshare, for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get started on those wrap tops. Before any sewing can begin, we need to take a few measurements for a custom fit pattern. To find the smallest part of your waist, I recommend tying some elastic around your waist and adjusting it until it sits flat. This is where the bottom of the shirt will sit once it is finished. The first measurement is your waist. The next measurement from the back of the waistline over your shoulder to the front of the waistline. Then measure from shoulder to shoulder, and from shoulder to where you want the faux sleeve of your shirt to sit. Mine was 5 inches from the shoulder. Double your sleeve measurement and add that to your shoulder to shoulder measurement to see how wide your top will be, and adjust the width if needed. Next, you need a loose neck measurement, and finally, measure from the base of your neck to where you want the slit of your shirt to end. Mine was 6 inches. At this point, you can draw up a paper pattern if you plan on making more than one shirt, or you can directly draw the pattern onto your fabric. The first line is the shoulder to shoulder plus sleeve measurement plus 1 inch seam allowance for the sleeve hem. The second line, which is the length line, is the over the shoulder measurement. I did not add seam allowance to this one as the ties don't make it any shorter. Mm -hmm. 
After marking the width and length, I then folded the fabric in quarters and cut it out. Next up is the ties. For the back ties, I cut out two 5 inch wide ties that are half my waist measurement plus 25 inches. You can make these shorter if desired, but I recommend going no shorter than half your waist measurement plus 15 inches. And for the front ties, I cut out two 2 inch wide ties that are half my waist measurement plus 15 inches. With the main pieces cut out, it's time to start sewing. First, I hem the long edge of the bodice with a double turn hem along both sides. Then, I folded the bodice into quarters and secured the edges to cut out the neckline. Measuring two and a half inches from the corner, I drew out a quarter circle and cut it out. Then I half unfolded it and measured six inches down the center front fold and cut a slit. Technically, I should have waited to cut the slit as this made it a touch more difficult to add the facing later. But I guess you can learn from my mistakes. Next, I traced out the neckline and slit and created a pattern for the facing. I recommend a 2 inch facing plus a half inch seam allowance. I then cut the facing out of the remaining fabric, as well as some interfacing. With the interfacing attached, I finished the edge of the neckline with pinking shears. You can also use a serger to finish this edge. For more ideas to finish raw edges without a serger, you can check out my video in the description. With the facing prepped, I then pinned it to the neckline with the wrong sides together, making sure to match up the center front slit. and then I sewed it in place with a half inch seam allowance. I then clipped the seam allowance all around the neck 
taking care not to snip past the stitching line. And then trimmed the corners of the neckline and turned the facing to the inside of the top. And then finished it with a half inch top stitching around the neck. With the main parts done on the bodice, it's time to move on to the ties. First, I stitched one side of the short sides together for both ties and then pressed the seam allowance flat. Lining up the center front of the bodice with the seam, I pinned the 2 inch wide tie to the front of the bodice and stitched it in place. And then repeated the same steps for the 5 inch wide tie along the back. Moving to the iron, I pressed up the seam allowance on the 2 inch wide tie. and then edge stitch the ties for a clean finish. I then repeated the same steps once again for the 5 inch wide ties. And after a couple hours of work, the top is done. Now if you're worried about the sides of the wrap top opening, you can add some snaps under the underarm area if desired. The Jiffy Blouse pattern is essentially the same pattern, but with a few small changes. In addition to the other measurements, you will also need a new sleeve length. Mine is from my shoulder to my elbow. You will also need the center back measurement to the side measurement on both the left and right if you wish to change the position of the ties. 
And lastly, you will need a new neckline measurement if you wish to change the circle to a square. I recommend using a French curve ruler for the next two patterns, but if you don't have one handy, you can also use a dinner plate or a side plate. For this pattern, I'm going to create a paper pattern as it'll be easier for you to see what I'm doing. First off, I marked the length of the top and then added the waistline measurement along both the top and the bottom of the pattern. Next, I marked the top of the shoulder line on the pattern. With these lines in place, I added my quarter waist measurement plus 3 inches on both waistline seams and the center front to sleeve measurement along the shoulder line. Next, I drew a straight line 5 inches up from the waistline and began drawing out the curve for the butterfly sleeve. Once this was done, I then started on the neckline. My neckline opening is 7 inches by 9 inches, but because I'm working with half the pattern, this opening is actually going to be 7 inches by 4 and a half inches. I wanted a deeper neckline on the front, so it is 3 inches at the back and 4 inches at the front. Once it was done, I cut it all out and the main pattern was ready to go. If you're worried about your sleeve pattern being different, you can fold the pattern in half and cut out both sides at the same time. For a nice clean finish, you can add a facing to the neckline, just like the first blouse. When working with a fabric that likes to move, I recommend checking that the fabric matches the pattern before adding the interfacing. And don't forget to use a pressing cloth to keep the interfacing glue off your iron, because that is no fun to clean off. With the interfacing attached, I lined up the facing pieces and stitched them together. and then finish the raw edge with mitered corners and a turn and stitched hem. Then, just like before, I pinned it to the right side of the top and stitched it in place with a half inch seam allowance.
and then I clip the corners just to the stitching and instead of top stitching around the neckline this time, I instead understitch the facing to keep it from showing. To finish the side and sleeves of the top, I used a narrow hem technique. First, I folded over the hem 3 8 of an inch and pressed it in place. Pressing is really important when working with a bias edge as it helps to keep the fabric from bunching up when you're stitching later on. Then I edge stitched the seam allowance. Then using applique or duckbill scissors, I trimmed away the excess seam allowance as close as I could to the stitching line, taking care not to cut the under fabric. And then I pressed up the edge once again and stitched along the first stitching line for a nice clean finish. With that finished, I then repeated the steps for the ties to finish off the top. Finally, for the last blouse, the new measurements you need are the shoulder to arm's eye length, the waist to hip measurement for the peplum, and the center front to center of the bust for dart placement. Same as before, I drew out the pattern with the shape according to my measurements. This time, for the waistline, I used the half waist measurement. And for the shoulder line, I chose the half shoulder measurement and then added the length of the sleeves. This pattern involved a lot of guessing as I was basing it off an illustration for the pattern. So what I'm actually drawing here is a little bit off compared to what I ended up using. Here's a rough drawing of what the pattern should have looked like. With the bodice pattern done, I double checked the waist measurement and then used the By Hand London Circle Skirt Calculator to create a half circle skirt peplum for the bottom of the shirt. I decided to add a peplum as I wanted to see what it would look like and because peplums were quite popular in the 1940s.
Because my peplum would have a center front opening, I cut the pattern in half and then added a half inch seam allowance to the cut edges. I turned one of the sides into a cut on fold pattern for the back piece and I used the other side for the front of the peplum and rounded the corners for the center front opening. With the pattern ready, it's time to start cutting. Using a tracing wheel, I transferred the dart placement. And then use a friction pen to make them more visible. Then I pin the darts along the lines. and stitch them in place. Once the darts were in place, I then hemmed the sides of the bodice with a narrow hem, repeating the steps shown on the jiffy blouse. And once again, I created a facing for the neckline and then pinned and stitched everything in place. and then added the ties to the front and back at the waistline. The front ties are finished in the same manner as before, but the back ties have one extra step this time as I'm adding a peplum. Instead of top stitching the wider ties closed, I instead stitched the right sides together and then flattened the tie so the seam allowance was centered on the tie and then finished the end so it made a point and then turned the tie right side out. To create the peplum, first I stitch the seams together with French seams for a nice clean finish on the inside. To hem the peplum, I created one inch wide bias tape. And then I stitched it along the right side of the hem and then turned it to the wrong side, gave it a nice press and top stitched it in place. To attach the peplum to the bodice, I pinned it with the wrong sides together along the waistline seam allowance on the inside and then stitched it in place. If this is a little confusing for you, imagine you're making a sandwich where the bodice is the center and the peplum and waistband are the bread. That analogy may even be more confusing and I'm sorry if it is. And for a clean finish on the inside, I then pinned the waistband over the seam allowance and then top stitch the open edge of the tie just like before.
And to finish it all off, I pressed the ties open so that the seam allowance was in the center of the tie. And with that done, all three tops are complete. I think each one of these tops have their own vintage or retro flair. The 40s top is very cottagecore to me. The 50s top has that popular retro vibe with the cherry print. And the 30s top definitely makes me think of a classy beach day or a fun night on the town. We have reached the end of the making process and now I want to chat about the experience. So, thoughts. Overall, I think they are fun and I can definitely see myself wearing these. Of the three, I think my favorite is definitely the 1930s Jiffy Top. Uh, they're just, it's, it's fun to wear. The sleeves are all swishy. It's just, yeah, I like it. I also prefer how the tie is off to the side versus the center front but that's just my preference. Now, because these are wrap tops, the underarms can gape. Like for instance, this one is wide open underneath. So this is just the style. Some people may not like that and others may not care. For myself, I'm going to be wearing a camisole underneath uh, just for a bit more coverage, but again, it's all up to preference. So to answer the question that I posed at the beginning of this video, how much material do these shirts use? As suspected, I could not get my shirts out of one yard of fabric. For the 1950s shirt, I used two yards of 45 inch wide cotton. For the 1930s Jiffy blouse, I used one and a half meters of 60 inch wide rayon. And for the 1940s blouse, I used one and a half meters of 60 inch wide cotton. I think someone who is shorter or not plus size could probably get away with using less, but as someone who is six feet tall with a 38 inch waist, I could not get away with using a yard. Overall, I really like how these turned out. I do think my 1940s blouse could have used a mock-up because it was more fitted, but I think all in all, I would give these patterns four out of five bobbins. So yeah, I definitely had fun with this and it was an interesting experiment to try. Let me know which blouse is your favorite and if you plan on trying out the style for yourself. I want to do a quick shout out to my patrons who actually helped choose the necklines for the second and third blouse. So thank you everyone who voted for the neckline designs and also thank you for your support. It makes it possible for me to continue creating these projects. So thank you so much. I am kind of curious who's made it to the end of the video, so let me know what your favorite ice cream flavor is down below. I'm more of a cookie dough, tiger tiger, moose tracks girl. Maybe some s'more in there. It depends on my mood. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you in the next video. Bye. And I've got Legally Blonde the Musical running around in my head right now. So if you want a tour inside my head, just turn on Legally Blonde the Musical. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!